Welcome to Good Friday Worship Service at Calvary Lutheran Church in Perm, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Paul Nelson, uh, one of the interim pastors here at Calvary, and it is my privilege to lead the congregation scattered, driven apart by this disease, but brought together by the gospel of Jesus Christ in worship today. Holy Week is upon us. We are in the middle of the great three days, telling the story of our faith slowly and deliberately and carefully. So we ask you to listen to the words of the hymns and the words of scripture and the words of the prayers that are offered for all of God's people, wherever they are, as we prepare to enter into the story of Christ's death and resurrection, all of us feel the weight of this global pandemic and we look for a good and godly word of hope and healing. If you're like me, you are weary of the separation already that will continue for weeks to come, longing for that day when we will be together again by God's grace. As we moved into another week of restrictions on this Easter weekend, I know it's weighing on you as well. However, there is no exception to the governor's orders to, during Holy Week. Not only will it be irresponsible and dangerous to gather for Easter, but it would also be a poor witness to our neighbor whose well-being should be our primary concern. So I'm here with Russ Munker, the music director at Calvary, Kerry Potramant, technical support, and Lisa P Peterson, and Deidre Klinert, musicians, and we're here to lead you in worship wherever you are on this Good Friday. So in the middle of the three days, we tell the central story of our faith. Today's worship is the ancient tenebrae service, where candles are extinguished as scripture is read, and we sing in response, no sermon today, let the word be rich in the hymns and in the word that is spoken. Life and death stand side by side as we enter into Good Friday here in this church as well as around the world. In John's Gospel, Jesus reveals the power and glory of God even as he is put on trial and sentenced to death. Standing with the disciples at the foot of the cross, we pray during this service for the whole world as Christ's death offers life to us, to all. At the close of worship, I invite your silence and your prayers for each other and for the whole world as we anticipate the culmination of these three days in Holy Week with the joy of Easter morning. Welcome to worship on Good Friday. It is time, then, on this Good Friday to reflect on Christ's suffering and death on the cross and what it means for you. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your whole family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross. Our hearts are heavy tonight as we again remember the crucifixion as well as this global situation we're in. Speak to us through the service as we listen, wait, watch, and pray with sighs too deep for words. Walk with us, gracious Father, through this dark night of the soul. Sustain us in the darkness and teach us to look to the cross before we move on to Easter. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
As the candles are lit for this tenebrae evening service on this night, we soberly consider the depth of our human plight, our blindness, our weakness, our treachery, that such an extraordinary cost should be necessary for our acquittal and redemption. Behold love so amazing and so divine. The first reading is the shadow of desertion from the 26th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would, be, it would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. Then Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to, to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all of the disciples.
shadow of temp temptation. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, to you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. speaking, 
Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Depth of mercy can never be Mercy still reserved for me Can my God his wrath forbear Me, the chief of sinners spare Heaven find me all
The Shadow of Denial from the 22nd chapter of Luke. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And about an hour later, yet another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly.
a shadow of cynicism. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If any kingdom were from this world, my, fo my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him.
the shadow of injustice. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified.
a shadow of mockery from the 15th chapter of Mark's Gospel. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with, the, with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 